that first step was easy peasy. We just use shapes and shape builder stuff we've already done. But next up, we're gonna get a little more complicated. We're still only gonna use shapes, but we're gonna use some new tools and some new features in Illustrator that we haven't really explored yet to create an eye for our vector skull. So our vector sugar skull. So we're gonna hold down on the rectangle tool and I wanna grab the ellipse tool. I'm gonna click over here on my sugar skull and I want my ellipse tool to be two inches by two inches, a perfect circle, two inches by two inches and click okay. I have my stroke right now set to three point. All right, so adjust your stroke to three point no fill, black stroke. Next up, we're gonna use an effect. So we're gonna come up to effect, and we had looked at using warp earlier on in the class. This time we're gonna use distort and transform, pucker, and bloat. So effect, distort and transform, pucker, and bloat. I'm gonna click on that, and as always, turn on preview. And I want my pucker and bloat to be about 50% or so. It's gonna give us this kind of cool effect. I'm gonna click okay. As always, when we do a warp or pucker and bloat, where we've taken one shape and Illustrator's done its magic to make it something else, we don't want it to be a circle like that. It still thinks it's a circle. So we have to come up to object, expand appearance. Now you notice Illustrator reshape the bounding box to fit around the outside of our new shape. Next, let's right click on that with it selected, transform and rotate. And we want to rotate by 45 degrees and click copy. I'm gonna hold the shift key on the keyboard. I'm gonna select the original so that both shapes are now selected. And we're gonna use a older version of Shape Builder. There's Shape Builder, and before Shape Builder, there was Pathfinder. So we're gonna come over to Pathfinder, and we're going to choose this first option under Shape Modes, which is called Unite. It's gonna unite it into a single shape. That's given us the base for our Sugar Skull Eye. Now we're going to do object, path, and offset path. Object, path, offset path. I'm going to click on that, turn my preview on. What the offset path does, and you'll notice it's 0.1389 inches on mine. If I double click on that, I'm going to type in 10 pixels and hit tab. And that's what it ends up being in inches. It makes an exact copy 10 pixels wider from the center, okay? I'm gonna click okay. I'm going to bump up the stroke on that one. So we have three points. I'm gonna bump that stroke up to nine points like that. Then I'm gonna come up to object, path, offset path again. And I'm gonna make this one 12 pixels, turn on the preview, like that, and click OK. We're going to do something cool. We're going to come over to Stroke. So come over to our Stroke panel. And if yours is minimal like mine, we want to come to the Options and Show Options. It's going to give us a whole bunch of other options here. We're going to want to round our cap, use a dashed line, click on this one to the right, which is going to align the dashes to the corners. We want our dashes to be zero points. And then our gap, we can put any number in. We're going to experiment. I'm going to try 15 and hit tab. You notice that it's created circles. What happens if I change that gap and I make it 25, right? It just makes the gap in between the circles bigger. So I'll leave it at 25. What if I want to make the circles bigger? That would be stroke, okay? Obviously that's too big. Starting to bump up into our other one. So I'm just gonna go back to nine. 
but I wanted to show you that's how you can make these circles go around a line or a shape like that. All right, and click off. We got the start of something cool. Let's take our ellipse tool and we're gonna come over to the center like this. I'm gonna hold shift and option and I'm gonna drag out proportionally from the center until it's right outside the inner edge of our kind of flower eye. I want to swap my fill and stroke. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna come up to object path, offset path, and we want this one to be smaller. So let's do, actually, we're not going to do offset path. We're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to take the selection tool and I'm going to right click on it, transform, scale. And with uniform, scale selected, I'm going to make that about 70% and hit tab and click OK. Whoops. Command Z, undo. Let's try that again. Right click, transform, scale, 70%, hit tab, and click copy. We want this new one to be a fill of white. White. We're going to alternate black and white. We're going to right click, transform, scale, keep it at that 70%, make a copy, I'm going to make this one, I'm going to flip the fill and stroke, I'm going to make the stroke black and no fill, then I'm going to right click, transform, scale, 70%, make a copy, and fill that with black. I'm gonna click off. I'm gonna take my white arrow here, and I'm gonna click, if I can, let's see, nope. I'm trying to get that outline there, so here's how we can do it. We can open this up, and they go in order. Doom, 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 doom. I'm gonna click right there on that one that's the outline. I want that outline shape. I'm going to eye drop and click this one that has the dots. Click off. Now we have some dots that match that shape. I'm going to command S to save the work we have for now. In the next tutorial come back and show you some more cool stuff we can do to the eye.